So make sure you buy those. We are going to weigh in our fighters, starting from the main event, and work our way backwards, okay? So this uh, main event is 10 three-minute rounds. It is for the New Zealand Super Welterweight title, the NZPBC. Your champion is Andre the Renegade Mikhailovich, and uh, Shea Brock, the business, will be the challenger of the night. So let's bring up Shea Brock first, ladies and gentlemen, to hit the scales. And feel free to clap, otherwise it looks like a hostage video. Benji, write these down, please. Cool. Sixty-nine point nine four. Shay, you need to come back and look up at the camera, please. All right, just look it up. Listen, arms up like that. Right, I'm all there. Just He's thirteen and two with six knockouts, hailing from Lake Gizzy and living in Auckland. He's a former NZPBA Super Welterweight Champion, Shay the Business Brock. Okay, and the champion, ladies and gentlemen, he is the reigning, defending, undisputed New Zealand Super Welterweight NZPBC Champion. He is an undefeated professional fighter with 14 fights, seven of them coming by way of knockout. This is Andre, the renegade Mikhailovich. Sixty-nine point nine for Andre. Right, Andre, just one more, Andre, one more, please. Thank you. Thank you. Just this up. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll get you boys. We're over here looking at fires. We'll get you boys behind the scale to face off one another. Let's come into the middle. Right in the middle. Back. back up a little bit. There we go. <laughs> what, you don't want a picture of you in your underwear on Facebook? Come on. Everybody's doing it. Andre, just come back. No, no. Yeah, no. Uh, Get in the middle and face one another. Once again, this is for the NZ Super Welterweight, NZ PBC Super Welterweight title. 10 3 minute rounds brought to you by the Whiskey. In Back of the camera, me. fellas. Thank you over here. Face forward, guys. Let's bring your right up, Andre. Please bring your right fist up. There we go. Good. Thanks, guys. Shay, good stuff. Thank you, fellas. Good stuff. All right. That's your main event for tomorrow night. Our next fight is scheduled for six threes. Uh, in professional lightweight boxing, let's bring up uh, Tane Cropley. Tane, come on up here. What are we doing with the carpet? What are we doing down here? Down here. Put it back. 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 Put <laughs> All right, uh, is Tate Crockley here? Where's Tate? Tate, come on up here, mate. We'll weigh you in. Round of applause for the tiny five, Tate Crockley. Tane, Tane, you need to look up at the camera, please. Yeah, I'm there, my friend. This up, good stuff, thank you. We'll just wait for the, the step in the back. 62 flat for Tane, 62 on the nose. Here we go, thank you. This fight is brought to you by Rance Creative. All right, he is fighting someone who makes a way in very special every time he gets up here. <laughs> for many different reasons. Give it up for Richie Hadlow, a hatchet! The view I had last time he weighed in was spectacular, let me just say that. Sorry about that. Oh, and also we'll be getting some pizzas, some meter-long pizzas happening in a little while, so stick and stay, don't go away. Jeez, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Louise! I thought it was your last time. <laughs> He's got the Borat Mankini on, ladies and gentlemen. Thank <laughs> you.
What does he weigh? I can't even see the friggin' scale. What does he weigh? 63.1. It's not that cold in here, is it? Kidding, I'm kidding. It's freezing. All right, we'll get you guys to face off behind the scale here. You want me to turn that way? Stop it. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if you want to turn that way, bro. All right, here we go. I don't know if you want to turn that way at all. Put your coats on. <laughs> this is going to go friggin' viral on Facebook. I can tell you that right now. So on your side. Richie, just put your All right, face, all right, face forward, guys. Up, guys. Let's get forward. the full effect here. Yeah, first up, but boys. Once again, this is scheduled for six threes in the professional lightweight Back division. The camera, guys. Yeah, and Richie Hadlow will be wearing boxing trucks tomorrow. Thank you. Well done. Oh, geez, geez. Thank, you Thank you very much. <laughs> Every time, I love it. All right, our next fight is scheduled for four three minute rounds of professional cruiserweight boxing action. It is brought to you by Adventure House Films. Let's bring out, uh, he'll be fighting out of the blue corner on the night, Pane Wild Heart Haraki. Pane! Been around the scene for a while, kickboxer, mixed martial artist. And now boxing tomorrow night. Pane, <laughs> <laughs> just straight up. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 he will be fighting on the night, an undefeated fighter who's 4-0 with three knockouts, Jerome the Panther Pamplonone. Hailing from London, England, residing in Auckland, New Zealand with Peach Boxing. Hop on, yeah. and then hop back on, what's it, go to school. There you go to zero, there you go, bro. Eighty-three on the nose. Eighty-three on the nose for that one. All right, we'll get you both, both you guys to uh, face off here. What you dress? Yeah. Richie, don't go walking down the street like that. You could get picked up. We're not, we're not far from K Road, bro. I know. It's right around the corner. Be careful. Good, good. You can be engaged by this afternoon. Once again, this is scheduled for four threes in professional cruiser rate. All right, boys, face forward. Thanks, guys, over here. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome stuff. All right, that'll bring us to our one of our female fights of the evening. This is scheduled for four twos, professional super lightweight female boxing action. It's brought to you by P3 Management. Give it up for uh, Asia Abid, baby mumble, here she comes. She's also a kickboxer who is bridging the gap to boxing tonight. That's tomorrow night. And then we'll let go to zero. There you go, hop on. Sixty point four. Back on there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be better, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, there we go. We're going to go to zero. Yeah. Here we go. Just to the camera here, please. 59.5 for Baby Mumble. One more. All right, she will be fighting a uh, Girls Commonwealth Games uh, bronze medalist, four-time Golden Glove champion, four-time New Zealand amateur national champion with over 50 amateur fights. This will be her long-awaited, anticipated debut here tomorrow night on P3. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Troy Garton. Troy. Go to Sarah, there you go, now hop on that bad boy. 59.5 for Troy. Troy, 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 don't rush, please look up the camera. That's right, you're looking good, thank you. If it's up, here we go, great. Thank you, one more. 
Thank you. All right, we'll get you girls to face off. Let's get uh, Baby Mumble up here and Troy to face off. Once again, four twos, super lightweight female, brought to you by P3. Get the camera, please. Get ladies. Thank you. Thank you. All right, good stuff. All right, is Tony Mookie here yet? Is she back there? She's a late scratch replacement, so she, uh, I'm not sure if she's here yet. She's not here. Okay, so we'll weigh in uh, her competitor. Uh, here she comes, ladies and gentlemen. Night Mia Motu. She's undefeated 6-0 with three knockouts, hailing from Kaitaia, New Zealand, residing in Auckland. She is the NZPBA female lightweight title holder. Night Mia Motu. See what she did there? Sorry, I'm still... Sixty-one point four for the Night Mia Motu. Thanks, Mia. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. All right, that'll bring us to our amateur fights of the evening. We'll start off uh, weighing in, anyways, with the um, super heavyweights, amateur styles. That's ninety kgs plus. This is a three three minute rounder. Let's bring up, if we can, uh, Uila Moo. Is he here? Did I say that right, mate? Ula Mawa. Mawa. Okay. So I get that right, Steven, so you know. All right, come on to be my friend. Benji will write, write, write these weights down anyway, even though the amateurs will be taking care of these guys tomorrow. We'll weigh these guys in now and, and face off as well. Step up with boost to zero, and then you know you have boxing. Mr. Mayhem Boxing. His nickname is Wheels. I like that fight name. Stop the camera, maybe here, of Okay. We'll have you hop off it again for a second, mate. We'll see if it uh, goes back to zero. Let me hop on it now, see if it does it in. The scale's zeroing up, so... Uh, but you know what, he's super heavyweight, 90 kgs plus anyway, so we will get a definite weight on him shortly. We'll, uh, we'll bring up his competitor and see if he also zeroes out because they're big fellas. Uh, this is a 17 and 1 national champion. Ladies and gentlemen, Amoto Nataika. Let it zero out here, go to zero. Wow, the scales start to. Uh... Do we have another scale, Richie? Yeah, I do. Is it, is it close by? We'll hop on that, we'll see what happens, mate. 111.2. 111.2 for Alboto Mataika. We'll try that other guy one other time. Let's bring him up here just to see if this thing will, will go, will let it go to zero. All right, try that, mate. Hop on there. That skill doesn't like you, bro. That's all right. So we'll get you guys to face off one another. Guys, right, just come across, please. This is our super heavyweight amateur right. route, yep. scheduled for three threes. Come into each other. Brought to you by P3 Management. Right, press up, please, guys. Press up. All right, back of the camera now, please. Back of the cameras. Thank you. Up here, please. Thank you. So tomorrow at the amateurs, when the amateurs do their medicals and weigh in um, during the day, we will get that weight for everybody, especially our Sky TV folks. We'll get that weight. Okay, that'll bring us to our first fight of the evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's scheduled for three threes. It's a catch weight at 72 kgs, which is an amateur middleweight bout, okay? Fighting out of the blue corner for Papatoli Boxing, Fred Parisi. Where's Fred? Come on up, Fred. Fred's 4-4 four four with two knockouts. That's his amateur record. All right, hop on in, mate. 
Frank's looking up, the camera Frank. Seventy-one point three for Fred Parisi. Seventy-one point three. All right, and he will be fighting Chad Chop Chop Mills. Chad, come on up here for Peach Boxing. 35-13 is his amateur record with three knockouts. Seventy-one point three for Chop Chop. Seventy-one point three. So they are both within the realms there. We'll get up to face off. Come on up, Fred. <laughs> Once again, this is a catch weight at 72 kgs, which is an amateur middleweight bout. Face forward, gentlemen. All right, well, that will do it from us here at the scale. Any fighters still need to come up here and do their 10 seconds of shadow boxing or get photos from Sky Television. Please do so. If any professionals need to see Fayez Khan to get the paperwork done through the PBC and Z, that would be good as well. And the doctors are all back for any fighters or trainers that want to talk to them. Just follow past through the bathrooms and you'll be all set. They'll take care of you back there. We'll see you tomorrow night, 7.30 live on Sky Sports. P3 Management, Friday Night Fights. <laughs> Yeah. 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 All right, just give us a second here, guys. We're going to try and reweigh him on this other scale to see if we can get all the weights here today, except Tony Milky, who hasn't showed up. And then, look away, and then we'll can you punch above the above the lens? Yeah. And, uh, all right, and then hold it. Hold it. You're here on Glad Rap, <laughs> and we're here with the one and only Tane Cropley. Tane the Tunny Far. Tane the Tunny Far Cropley. Okay, not a lot of people will know who you are, so tell the people at home who you are. Uh, my name's Tane the Tunny Far Cropley. I uh, come from Omaru down south, representing up here in Auckland, so it's an honour to be here. Cheers to Glad Rap Channel. I seen you guys last time asking some questions around everybody, so um, you know, cheers for you guys' um, views. Eh? Appreciate it. Now, um, I want to. You've, what sort of background have you gotten? You've got a little bit of an amateur background, is that right? Um, yeah, I got a little bit of an amateur background. I wouldn't say I was like the greatest, but you know, I was a few um, South Island Golden Gloves champ, stuff like that. Other than that, yeah, just pretty steady, easy boxing yeah. background, yeah. yeah. I heard that uh, in your first uh, professional fight, uh, I think you got knocked down in the first round, and then you came back and knocked out your opponent in the end. Yeah, I did. I can, um, Got me with a good uh, body shot in there, and then um, yeah, come back in the third round, halfway through the third round, and um, end up cleaning them out. So, <laughs> so you you're going to be fighting against uh, Richie Hadlow t um, tomorrow night. Um, probably one of the toughest uh, hard punches in the lighter divisions. Uh, what's your game plan? 
What's my game plan? Not let him in. You know what I mean? Not let him in. Close as he got to me was tonight, and that's it. Like, <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, everyone's got a plan until they get hit at the end of the day. So, you know, I'm just not going off too much. I know, his, I know what he likes to do. I know his one thing is what does he want to do is uh, he just wants to bang and knock people out if I haven't seen him, you know? So, um, uh, yeah, sort of just, you know, got a wee plan to him, but hey. You know, it all changes once you're in there, so, yeah. I think the important thing is, is that you know how to box, but also you have heart because you know how to go down and get back up and knock the other person out. Yeah, definitely, definitely, you know, and even on, like, my last pro fight, went down from the bodies. You know, those bodies are killer, you know, only take, you got eight seconds, so, you know, it's, it's back up and back into it, so, yeah. But. I was actually at your last fight against Shiva for the, I think it was the Pacific title. Yeah. What happened there? Um, so, halfway through, I felt like something like just popping my shoulder, ended up snapping my collarbone, eh? oh. and so finished around, and um, yeah, couldn't really lift up my arm after that, so. He throws so hard that he snaps his collarbone. Oh, well, I was trying to play harder, so I just finished him in that first round, but hey, you know, it is what it is, so, yeah. It was a tough, tough fight in Wellington. So, so Tane, the Tani Far Cropley going up against uh, Richie Hadlow, what's your um, prediction for tomorrow night? Honestly, I've, I, I want to go. I want to go six rounds, and I want to go split. If not, I want to go first round. Both of us finish one. Just, <laughs> just something big, eh? You know what I mean? In for a fight. In for a good night. So. Yeah. Two more things. Uh, what do you want to do in your career in boxing? Um, you know, I want to see myself at the top level. You know, I want to see borders and that start dropping, and try to get some overseas experience, some overseas fights, stuff like that, and. You know, start doing a bit of travelling and see where it can actually take me, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Okay, finally, I want you to look down into that camera, take this microphone and tell Richie what you're going to do to him. What I'm going to do to him? Yeah, what are you going to do to him? I'm just going to make you miss, brother. You ain't touching me. I'm going to be counting you. You ain't touching me. That's facts. <laughs> like, let's go. Tane the Tanifa Cropley. You're here on Glad Rap Channel, and I'm here with Mr. Business, Mr. Business, Mr. Mr. Business, Shay Brock. How's it going? Yeah, good. How are you? I'm, I'm doing good. Um, this is your first fight in a while, isn't it? No, I fought in November. Oh, that's, um, that's not too bad. Yeah. Yeah. You fought, uh, was it Blake or? No, I fought uh, Jesse Nikora in November. Right. No, it was pretty low key, like nobody really heard about it, but before then, yeah, it was um, Marcus. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, before that, that's when you had your kind of a bit of a break. Um, but you went up against Marcus and ended up in a draw. Yeah, yeah, no, it was a good fight. Yeah. Are you wanting to get that fight eventually? Again? Yeah, yeah. I'll just focus on this one. This, you know. Yeah. So um, this is quite a big fight. Um, I think it's just as big as your fight against uh, Bowen Morgan. Um, in my opinion, at least. Um, what uh, made you come to the decision of taking this fight? Well, there's not really anybody else to fight in New Zealand, and I want to be fighting the best. So I've always had Andre on the radar anyway, ever since we, we used to spar. He actually helped me spar for, this, um, for the bone fight. And um, I knew our weights were similar, so we'll end up fighting again. Oh, you know, end up meeting again in the ring, so it happened. So it's obviously quite different um, sparring him and training and uh, fighting him in the ring, but uh, can you take anything or learn anything from what you sparred with him? Um, uh, yes and no. I mean, you just, I, I, I take it as it comes anyway. I mean, I'm sure he's been working on things and I've been working on things, so yeah, I just take it as it comes, really. So, um, sorry, I just went completely blank. Uh, so, this is your second uh, New Zealand title fight that you've had. Uh, well, third if you in if you include your defence. What do you want to do if you won won the title? Oh, man, like I said, I haven't really looked too far ahead. I'm just focusing on this fight because it's yeah, it's quite a big deal. So I'm um, just trying to get myself as you know, yeah, just completely focus on this one fight and then see what happens from there. See what doors open. So you've had a pretty rich career, um, rich not in money, but you know, quite a valuable career. You've had a quite a bit of an amateur background. Yeah, yeah, no, I had a few fights as an amateur. I think about 80 fights as an amateur. Um, 
So yeah, I'm obviously relying on that experience because um, you look at Andre, he's got everything over me physically, you know, he's, he's bigger, stronger, longer, pause. Um, so yeah, I'm... Got the experience. Yeah, I've got to rely on him. Yeah. I remember um, you've won multiple New Zealand uh, titles as a junior and through that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did alright as an amateur. I mean, you know, that, that was sort of like my apprenticeship really in, in boxing, but um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to say to that. Yeah. And uh, I remember, because I've watched your, um, I was there at your first uh, debut fight, I think um, I judged majority of your fights. Um, I think you've actually had a pretty good career as a far and um, went over to Australia a couple of times and uh, did pretty well. Yeah, well, yeah, you said it all. Um, well, yeah, it, it, uh, it has been good, but then again, like it could be better. I mean, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm a harshest critic, so it could be better, but I mean, I've been working on things, so yeah. I mean, that, that fight against Ray Musson was, a, was an amazing fight. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I still look back on that and, you know, look at things that I could work worked on from that fight as well. So it wasn't a perfect outing, but, you know. I know that you um, were born in Gisborne. Um, have you ever thought about fighting in Gisborne any time in your career? I fought there, like, I think twice as an amateur. Um, but, yeah, now I've, I've always... Uh, this sort of been, like, a, in the back of my mind, kind of, like, low-key... Um, aspiration of mine was to fight as a pro in Gisborne, but I mean, if it happens, it happens. And every ring looks the same to me, no matter where it is. <laughs> it's more, more of like a um, more of inspiration to fight in Gisborne, but yeah. But uh, Craig Thompson, get a, get a show in Gisborne. <laughs> yeah, that'll be good. So, do you have a game plan going into um, this uh, fight with Andre? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always a game plan. Um, An A, B, C. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's. Yeah, I got a, yeah, I got, I got a few. Um, just like I said, I'm, I'm trying to use my experience. Of, of you know, plan A doesn't work. You know, I'll go to plan B, plan C, plan D until one of them eventually works. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want you to look down in that camera. Hold this microphone and tell Andre what you want to do to him. <laughs> Go WWE. Um, we're gonna fight. <laughs> uh, good luck. <laughs> He's gonna fight. <laughs> well, I want to say thank you for um, all you've accomplished in your career so far. Um, it ha it's helped me a lot because I've judged a lot of your fights, so um, thank you for that. Thank you for the road that we've actually gone on, me as a judge, you as a boxer, and uh, hope for the best for tomorrow. You're here on Glad Rap Channel, and we've got two of the biggest stars in Auckland at the moment. We've got New Zealand lightweight champion Mia Motu, or the Knight Mia Motu, yeah. and the one and only, the Borat, Richie Hadlow. Now, are we saying the Borat because do you still have it on? <laughs> no, I don't actually. I took it off. Oh, that's uh, a shame. <laughs> so, you'll see on the weigh in video that uh, Richie came in wearing a Borat costume. <laughs> I'm a big G. <laughs> You're a big G. I'm a big G. It is a big G, and I'm a big G. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. First of all, first of all, let's see who's who's up next. It's Mia. Well, talk to Mia first. Um, first, Mia, welcome to the show. We haven't actually, you've been wanting to do this interview with me for a long time. Yes, I have been waiting. You haven't been calling me out. I feel left out. I've been waiting as well, but like this bastard has been too busy. Oh, I blame the cameraman. The there. blame, yeah, blame yeah. game. Blame the guy you can't see. <laughs> yeah, blame the guy you can't yeah, see. Yeah, sweet ass. No one knows what he looks like. Now, first of all, let's actually uh, go beyond this fight. Let's go beyond your career. Let's go at the amateurs. Um, you've had a pretty decent amateur career, is that right? Yeah, I heard a good one. Yeah. 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 I heard in the past uh, you've fought quite a lot of um, well-known names, um, including your recent person that you just uh, fought recently. In the yeah, Tanya Reid. Tanya yeah, I got my comeback. You got your comeback. Yeah. She beat you. In the amateurs? Yeah. Oh, cool. How did that happen? My shoulder popped out yeah. and oh, my corner yeah. threw in the towel. Bastards, how dare they? How dare they? I'm no, still disappointed. Your corner did a great job. 
great job. Yeah. Saved you to fight him. another day. True, and then next true, day, yeah. fought, and you won. See, he's got my back. Yeah. I'm just like, no, keep fighting, keep fighting. Yeah. That's, uh, I'm the same as you. I've got the same energy. So um, now you are the new NCPBA light weight champion. How does that feel? Uh, it feels normal. It feels normal. Yeah. Every day. Yeah, it just feels like normal every day. Yeah, I just treated it like it was another fight. Now, I have this um, goal for you. I've got this goal. Because you know how there's like about three or four sanctioning bodies in New Zealand? There's like yeah. NZPBA, there's PBC, there's Pro Box, and I don't know if NZNBF is still around. What's the best one? Doesn't really matter. <laughs> um, but there's never been a woman a boxer to actually unify three of them at once. Oh yeah, that's Oh, challenge is on. Easy I did not work. know that. So that's my challenge for you. Coming for it. Okay, yeah, that's my challenge for myself too. Thanks, PG. Has a male done it before? Uh, well, there's been when NZPBA was when it, there was only NZPBA and NZNBF. Um, we've had a couple of boxers that's had both of those titles at once. So it kind of was an undisputed champion. But then later on, PBC started getting their title in an in pro box. So there hasn't been a male that's done all four of them. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. That's us. Yeah, that's us. See, yeah, Glad Rap seen yeah. it here first. But if you the, get three uh, of them, that's kind of the like undisputed by itself because NZNBF is not doing much anymore. So yeah, so is that the same for the males? Yeah, same for males. We've got to keep it equal yeah. here, guys. We're all about equality. Yeah. So, all uh, about it. Yeah. yeah. I'm coming. That's I us. am coming. Yeah, you know that. Cairo, George, I see you. Oh, All you people oh, out there, I yeah. see you. So, um, if you, a little bit of history, Danielle Smith is the first um, person, first female to win uh, titles in two different weight divisions. Um, then we've got uh, Giovanna Perez. I think she was the first, our oh, first person to win two different commissioning bodies. And yeah, and Lani Daniels was the first one to win two different commissioning bodies with two different weight divisions. So that's, I don't know, you could be the first woman to win three um, commissioning body New Zealand titles. Oh, yeah, definitely. And male as well. Yeah. Oh, go. yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, Cheers, yeah, Benji. You have, to get the, you have to get the first one first. Mate, you know it. You know that we're both Ooh. here to rumble and we're here to fight. So, I mean, yes, I come out in a big G string. <laughs> yes, you know, I probably look terrible. Because I had to make weight, but it's for a laugh. But when we get in the ring, we're serious. Yeah, so. we're serious. I've seen Mia fight, and um, I think she's seen me fight. So I've seen her fight heaps of times. Yeah. He's been in some wicked walls. Yes. Well, I mean, like I've seen his last couple of fights. Um, Nort Bochamp. Yeah. Um, what was his last fight? Ob Obadi. Yeah. Obadi. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like Obadi's name. It just keeps going. It, it just sounds like it's falling down the hill. Like Obadi, yeah. Obadi, Obadi, Obadi. It's just rolling. Yeah. <laughs> so, let's talk about that last fight with Obadi, um, because uh, if you've seen on Spark, uh, Spark, Spark Sports, you might be able to see that fight. Um, yeah. How was that yeah, fight? Up, if you go in the like features or something of that pay per view, but I'm not sure if it's still around. Yeah. We were talking about it earlier. Um, it just haven't been, it hasn't been put on YouTube, but um, I've requested Spark to do that. So who knows if it will happen. Right now I'm just a small fish yeah, in a about, big itself. pond. The fight itself, uh, he rocked me at <laughs> the first punch he landed, wobbled me, and then I thought, oh yeah, sweet. And you, you got his worst. I didn't even know it happened, bro, to be honest. Just, that's what happens when I get in there. Yeah, I guess so. Um, but uh, yeah, he, he decided to trade with me and just stand there and um, I don't think that's a good idea with anyone but let alone yeah. myself so now let's talk about right. your last two fights you went with uh, Tanya Reid who was the first um, female New Zealander to win the Australasian um, title now she's retired after that fight so, uh, oh, you retired her? no she was already retiring she, she was going yeah. to retire anyway so, yeah. so you smashed the granny yeah <laughs> you know, she's still going to rush for that lady. Um, no, it was a good fight. I trained for um, eight rounds, and I was expecting to go eight rounds. So I went was, four, eight. It went three. 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 Cool. three. Yeah, it went three. Yeah. So. Which, to be honest, she probably ended at two, but went, went to the third one. And yeah. yeah. I went to the third round and was yeah. done. Yeah. Finished. 
And honestly, uh, I've you've seen on my Facebook, I never take photos with boxes. Um, you know that as well. Um, the only boxes I've ever taken photos of is Giovanna. Um, this twat uh, took a photo of me and Joseph Parker, <laughs> um, which I didn't, but, but it's up there now. And uh, me and you, we can get one later. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. yeah, and I feel privileged. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. you've I obviously been chosen yeah. from Benji. Yeah, no, to because be the one. you know what? From my first fight, he was there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and okay, my number one, he's been at every fight, he has yeah. not missed one. Oh, there you yeah, go. see. Yeah. And telling you when to be at your uh, corner at the same time. Always on time with my. He's like, Mia, you've got five minutes. You've got one second. Get out there. And I'm like, please hold for another second. <laughs> no, get your G string on, get yeah, your blocks on. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you wear G-strings too? No. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uncomfortable. Like sugar, sugar. Um, okay, a little bit about your heritage because you're from um, up north. Um, yeah, Napoli. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we'll be on tomorrow. Yeah. So I'm from Kaitaia, and my home stomping ground is Pukiporo, Te Rarawa. That's where my grandparents, and that's my my home, the way I love, and all my whanau are from there. And that's why I am the way I am, is thankful to my family. Yeah, they made me a stronger wahine, so. Very strong Love wahine. it, yeah. It was actually very recently that we, I just found out that I was a descendant of Māori as well. I'm from uh, Ngāpoi and uh, my hapu is Te Popoto. And I'm still trying to uh, say my marae because I'm very bad. <laughs> I'm still doing my pronunciation. Um, yeah, but you should just say it. You should uh, have confidence. Uh, I forgot how Marangi. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no, at least I try. I, I can say I can say it if it's on a piece of paper. I guess I've had very. Yeah, I can say it on a piece of paper. But if you say it, uh, I struggle. I'm like, uh, but I can sound it out. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, uh, with you. Um, I'm a proud Pakia. My people once were warriors. Actually, uh, about 2,000 years ago, the Romans tried to conquer the the Pictish people. Uh, in a land called Caledonia and um, they couldn't conquer them, they had to build a wall it's called Hadrian's Wall they never ever conquered those people because they were tied into their land and um, they were one with the land and, and they were unbeatable so very much similar to the, the Māori culture and um, what we have in New Zealand and uh, I am a proud Pākehā and I represent my people but I also have love for um, Aotearoa and Maori people and the culture and everything. Yeah. So um, that's why you see me in the kilt with the the branded hatchet uh, kilt pin. Are you gonna bring those axes tomorrow? Uh, no, no axes. I'm more. Um, I've got the the poi poi's tomorrow. Uh, that's right. I, I actually saw your theme. Can I reveal the theme song? No, no, no. no. no, no. We're, going, we're going. We're going to keep it a secret. You have to watch um, watch online because I've seen the theme song. It's a great theme song. Um, you have to, yeah, oh, there yeah, yeah, there we go. We've got the there Richie headlet. Yeah. <laughs> With a cigarette in his mouth as well. All right. Um, you've had a couple of uh, tough fights recently with uh, Tanya and what's his name? What Her name? Aisha? Aisha yeah. yeah. Uh, she was a tough fighter as well. She's fighting on the card as well. Yeah, she's strong. Yeah, she could take, Ooh. definitely take my punches. I think that's going to be a good fight. Yeah, yeah I think it's going to be a good fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it all depends. It's only two minutes. She, she, she's lo she's looking at me right now. She's looking at me as like you bitch. <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm like, why would you do that to me? Because I don't believe him. Nah, nah. <laughs> boxing's boxing, like boxing, boxing's yeah. honest. So that's an interesting fight because yeah, I, it is an interesting I feel like Aisha can move well and, and box well. So uh, it's only two minute rounds though. That's a bit that really concerns me. Yeah, because she's got... used to a lot longer rounds because she's a kickboxer. So. Yeah, we will see. This is this is the fight games. Why it's yeah. exciting? It's so, interesting. I'm excited for it because I know that De Troy will definitely. Yeah, good give luck it. to Troy and as well. It's your pro Aisha debut, so wish you the they'll best. They'll both give it, and it's going to be an awesome fight. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you're fighting Tony Moki because your opponent uh, pulled out. I think was it yesterday or not? Um, you, do you know much about her? No, I don't know much. You're, just, know you're much. just going to go in and annihilate her. Um, I'm executing what I've got to do. That's all I worry about. I never worry about my opponents. That's my coach's job. It just, just, just happens. Yep. And I just focus on what I've got to do. And you're fighting uh, Tang Cropley, who is uh, running around somewhere. Yeah, well, you just saw Joe. He, he's, that's, Tang, that's Tang's dad. And <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Um, we've known each other since way back in the day. So um, 
yeah, I'm just just on it. Ah, yeah, so he's half Scottish too. There you go. Part of the ritual, as well. but, yeah. but these guys have been part of um, my journey since the conception of it. So uh, just an honour that they're they're here fighting and that we're going to put on a show. So. I took a DNA test and um, I found out that I was 53% Scottish. So, you know. How did you take the DNA? Did you have to no. eject? Oh. <laughs> Uh, it was Sorry, a lot. I don't know. The, the DNA test was a lot of drooling into this little tube, so it's spitting in the tube. Oh. <laughs> you pretty much just okay. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Yeah, I know. Generally, it's rude to spit, but you know, yeah, just, just, just it's funny. It's yeah. 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 <laughs> it's my favorite saying. You gotta ask my dad that one. Yeah. <laughs> Final thing for you two. Let's start with Mia. Take the microphone, look into the camera, and tell Tony what you're gonna do to her. Oh my gosh, this is hard. Um, I'm not a person to talk about myself. Uh, um, so, so what I am I going to do to her in the ring? Uh, do a WWE style, you know? Trash talk. Yeah. Okay, I'm struggle at trash talking, sorry. I'm too kind, I'm too nice, that's my nature. Yeah. Mia's yeah. going to get in there. She's going to move her head, she's going to come left to right, and she's going to throw fucking bombs from every single angle. So um, that's how she rolls. And um, hey, the result will will be what it's going to be yeah. but uh my money's on me yeah set. seek destroy yes yeah while you have your microphone tell the camera and tain what you're going to do to him i think mia, mia can do my one. Oh. <laughs> hey. this is easy this one i already know what he's going to do he is going to put him to sleep oh, 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 oh yeah, yeah. See? There you go. Please welcome the Nightmare New Zealand NCPBA lightweight champion, Mia Motu, and the Borat, the Hatchet, Richie Hedlow. Yes, destroy. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, this is <laughs> Man, there was character. I always hey, do. Real, not fake. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Move forward, move forward, move forward. There's a picture behind you. We gotta get some. I'm really calm now. Oh, you look so different. I didn't even realize that was you next to the day. I'm with a bit of makeup on my hair. I went to day one. I said hi. I know, I saw you. I went to day one. It's all right. All righty. We're here on Glad Rap Channel. We've got the one and only bronze medalist at the Commonwealth Games. We've got Troy Garton. You always use that. <laughs> always, of course, of course. I, I have guess to... you've got to while it's, you know, while it's there to use. Yeah. <laughs> I'll keep on using that until you get yourself your first New Zealand title as a professional. Okay, yeah. deal. Yeah. <laughs> We're no waiting pressure. for that. No, no pressure. pressure. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. She will get that. She's going to be the best New Zealand champion in her division and see how far she takes it. Let's talk about your amateur career because um, you're making a pro debut now. Let's uh, go back from the beginning. How did you get into boxing? Oh, um, just a, a corporate fight, uh, and from there I decided I really liked the training, and I enjoyed, I don't know, I think you either get in the ring and enjoy it, or you won't enjoy it, and I really liked it, so um, I'm here, 52 fights later. 52 fights. 52 wins. Oh, no, I wish. <laughs> I won't give you that record. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you come from a very, very good gym. Have you stayed at that gym this whole entire time? Yes, actually, my coach um, Terry has been my coach since I picked up a pair of boxing gloves. So um, I'm very loyal to him, but yeah, he's got me where I am. So grateful. Yeah. And when you talk about um, going into corporate boxing, um, you transferred into amateur. How was that? Uh, it was just it just gave me a um, chance to be able to fight for uh, um, uh, you know uh, get on the New Zealand team, go to uh, get national titles and that kind of stuff. And it's given me that footstep, the chance to go to Com Games and um, learn the foundations of boxing. And then uh, from there now, you know, I feel it's time to do this pro stuff. <laughs> because um, a lot of people um, talk shit about corporate boxing and um, it's quite interesting because a lot of people start off in corporate and then end, them end up going into amateur, kind of like a gateway almost. Yeah, I guess it is. I mean, I guess there's nowhere to go is from corporate. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, it's either pro or amateurs, right? And I think 
Um, yeah, I, I'm grateful that amateurs have taught me a lot of foundations. I can still fight amateur at the moment, so Com Games next year might be still an option um, for me. And um, up the medal, the future gold medalist. Um, and um, but in the meantime, I can do this pro stuff. So it's just been nice to have some fights coming up um, with. Uh, everything's happening in the world and not be able to travel so much so yeah 52 fights <laughs> that's a lot of fights <laughs> i know i don't know if i should even be advertising it like yeah 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 because then you probably expect me to be a better boxer um <laughs> but i've come a long way over those 52 fights <laughs> Now, um, I want to talk about um, your corner again, because um, you've got a lot of people in your team, a lot of great people in your team. I mean, of course, there's yourself. I mean, like, yeah, you know, we talk lots about you. But I've got Giovanna. Giovanna, world yeah. champion, uh, retired uh, professional boxer who's now gone to kickboxing. I know, so I'm watching her and another teammate, Holly, who's also another good boxer. Um, they're fighting on Art of War next weekend, and so I'm going along to support them with that, so that would be very cool. I don't think they'll be getting me in the ring for no kickboxing. Um, but Yes. Did, when you found out that they're going to kickboxing, did you go, no, the dark side of the force? Kind of I, no, I definitely didn't, but I definitely was um, wanting to know about if where it hurts on the legs and all the bruises, and I've seen the evidence, and I just think I'm too pussy for it. <laughs> I, I am. A good bru they've, got, they've got some good bruises on their legs, eh? I'm just like, uh -uh. it's enough me having to think about these hands coming towards me, let alone kicks, so kudos to the kickboxers. Kudos. I know that Giovanna was going, and it's like, oh, Bruce, next one, yep. She loves it. Yeah, she loves it. I think that girl likes pain. She, she's a machine, you know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absol absolute machine, yeah. Yes. I mean, like, seriously, I mean, I think she, she hits as much as she loves, loves pain, so. Yeah. She's a different breed, that one. Um, she's tough, yeah. yeah. How about, um, did, you did some sparring with her, is that right? Yes, we don't, we don't spar so much these days. Uh, yeah. She's, she's uh, a bit heavier and can hit harder than I can. <laughs> um, one punch and she'd knock me out. Um, but I just tend to uh, run around her <laughs> and be a bit quicker. <laughs> it's amazing um, what a vegan can do to you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> Imagine if she had meat. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Uh, she has all the beans, you know. Yes. All, the, all the beans for protein. The lentils. The lentils. Mm. Yeah. I know. I, um, Terry and I make this joke all the time is when we drive past um, a grass field, and it's like, oh, there you go, Giovanna. There's your meal. I'm. I'm. I'm not, I'm not saying anything. I'm, I'm, I'm not going. She's it's not. All on him. Uh, it's all on me. I, I can make these jokes sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes. I'm sorry. <laughs> Please don't hurt me. <laughs> Alright, let's talk about your pro debut. It's, as you said, it's about time, you say? It's about time? Yeah, well, no, it's actually happening earlier than I probably would have planned because my goal was to qualify for the Olympics. Um, of course, that's being pushed out to this year. And then um, officially found out that they've cancelled our world qualifying event. And really, the only way I knew the only way I was going to qualify was to fight for a position because I don't have a high enough ranking in the world. So um, that is officially, that journey is over. Um, and so it was just kind of like, right, what do I do from here? And um, see what we can do in the pros. And maybe, as I said, I mean, Com Games is only four, 15 or 16 months away, not long away. So see what I can do and see which way it goes. Do you know your opponent for tomorrow night? I just met her tonight. Um, seen her, I saw her fight on King in the Ring a couple of weekends ago, which I thought she fought, um, fought really, really well. Um, so yeah, so I don't know a whole lot about her. Southpaw, um, tough, like she seems Very tough, strong, and so um, yeah, it'll be good. Uh, yeah. I think one of the, her fights with me is on Glad Rap. Um, Glad rap. Um, there's another one on Spark Sports where um, I, th I believe it's on Spark Sports. Uh, so you can if, so go to Spark Sports and uh, get that. So Spark Sports, we want that sponsorship for us. So you know Spark Sports sponsorship. Hey, eh? hey. Um, so probably go to uh, Spark Sports to watch that fight. Um, so that she's a really tough fight a uh, fighter, and Mia herself said that she sh shouldn't be a kickboxer. She should be a boxer because she fights hard. Yeah, and she seems to have a good tight guard. Um, uh, yeah, so sometimes with the kickboxers have a slightly lower, just it's a different guard that they obviously have, um, but she seems to bring it in quite too close. So, um, yeah, got my work cut out for me tomorrow night. Hmm. So, do you have a game plan for tomorrow night? Oh, go in there. I don't know, do my thing. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting, four, two minutes. I'm used to three, three minutes, so slightly faster rounds. Um, but yeah, no, just go in and have some fun. 
see what happens after the first round and what I need to do. Yeah. Two more questions. First one, what do you want to do in your professional career? Just see how far it takes me, really. Yeah. I mean, I just love fighting. I really do. That's all I do it for. Um, there's no money in women's boxing, and so it's not that's not the drive behind me. But um, if we can bring more awareness to women's boxing, that would be amazing. Um, get more people um, appreciating the sport and not um, hating on it. I, you know, I didn't have appreciation for the sport until I um, tried it myself. So, um, yeah, I guess just see how far I can go. And last thing, look down to the camera, take this microphone, and in a WWE style, I want you to tell, what's her name, Aisha, sorry, Aisha, what you're going to do to her. No, <laughs> that is not what I'm going to do. <laughs> I couldn't. I'm not going to. Say all the nice things in a, in a WWE style. No, I'm not even going to say that. I've got to get the right mindset to get in the ring. No, I'll just say, I'm looking forward to stepping in the ring. There you go. <laughs> Troy Cutton! <laughs> that's the best I can do, this tough boxer. <laughs> yeah, that's the first one. Uh, no, that's the, that's the second one. I think me had, Oh no, because then me and Richie swapped. Oh, yeah. yeah. What happened? Uh, me and didn't want to do it. Yeah, come on. I'll sit with him. I'll just sit there. You're here on Glad Rap Channel, and finally, after months of. Uh, a lot of anticipation. We've got the promoter himself, Nick Randall. How's it going? G'day Benji, how are you going? Uh, good, good. Not a lot of people know out there, but uh, he went to school with my cousin. Oh, did I? No, I didn't. You lived with James. No, I didn't. Good, oh, you... good start, good start. <laughs> 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 Fuck! <laughs> Let's start us again. No, yeah. um, no you, you know James. Yeah, I do know James. He's, he went to grammar and I went to a different school, but you know. What school did you go to? Don't worry about it, we don't need to talk about it. <laughs> don't talk about it, don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. Oh, we're all good. Oh, good. He, came from the mean, he, he came from the mean streets of Auckland. Yeah, the mean streets of, uh, I don't know, what are we? Well, You're telling the story, Richard. Remmers. Yeah. I don't know, I'm making shit up. Yeah. We want to know about you, Nick. Yeah, we, we want to know about you. Alright, so, we, before we talk about the show, what got you into boxing? Oh, just a massive fan. I actually walked into Boxing Alley at 12 years old, trained by Beetham. Um, and yeah, just just love it, massive fan. Got back from London a year ago now and just saw what they're doing over there and thought there was you know a massive opportunity to give these guys, the talent's all here, right? And giving them a premium platform and look, this is just the start. So, you know, November 13th last year, that we were all learning. So we're learning on the job here like anyone, so, you know. Excited about tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, we, we had a couple of heart attacks with um, COVID. <laughs> yeah, like November 13, this bit of deja vu today as well when we had this, look, we've had it, we've, we've had a border case today, but I don't know, the show's going ahead, so um, we're excited. We've almost sold out. It's going to be rocking in there. Tell us about your experience pre-boxing -box, um, pre because, uh, as you see, this came from the UK. I think I saw somewhere that you've got some sort of university degree. I hope you've been checking me out. Um, yeah, just I, I'm, I'm gay. I'm, I check all the guys out. There you go. There you go. <laughs> and Richie, especially yeah. this guy. Look yeah. at him. Oh. <laughs> Look at him. Um, no, just marketing background. Double, went to Auckland Uni. Nothing special, mate. Went and did sales and marketing in, in the UK and then got back here and, you know, Met, met Isaac, met Andre, uh, met this guy, and you know, here we are promoting our second event. He means, unfortunately, he met this guy. No. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a lot of good things to say about Nick. I call him the um, the New Zealand Eddie Hearn, and um, I think he's doing a great a great uh, service for the boxing, and um, you know, especially with the Peach Gym and and working in with all those guys. We're all trying to put on fights and. He's enabling the platform, and it's a premium platform at that. So, um, you know, tomorrow night when we're sitting down in these seats, they're comfortable and you have a good view. You've got a cup holder. It's um, it's absolutely genius. So the show, the product is top of the line. And um, I like old Dave Higgins. Uh, I like him a lot, but um, he really didn't give uh, the rest of New Zealand boxers uh, a lot of a platform underneath Joe Parker. Um, I think that's not... I'm not talking trash, I, I think I'm just talking the truth, so I'm really excited mm. for this guy being on the block and um, P3 all the way, that's why I wear the shirt and call yeah, people yeah. out and, and do all that, all that stuff. So yeah, sure. It's interesting you mentioned David Higgins because I like to say that he put New Zealand on the map um, for um, 
promoters-wise uh, for boxing in New Zealand, um, because he was the one that um, started doing David Tua versus Shane Cameron and Joseph Parker and onwards and onwards. So I, I like to say he's the one that put New Zealand on the map with Parker um, and David Tua as well. Um, but we wouldn't disagree. Yeah. No, no. But um, what takes big balls is to do your very first show on a televised platform, yes. which is what Nick has done. Yes. Yeah, well, yeah we Nick. did. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, and, and on David Higgins, like, he, he doesn't get enough respect. I think he's done massive things for New Zealand boxing, and I don't think I'm competing with him at all. Like, this is just a, a, a small boutique platform for the for these up and coming kids, and you know. Let's see where we can take it, sort of thing. But and these old kids. And these old 32 year olds. But yeah, no, we're, we're excited about tomorrow, like I say. But let's just um, see how we go there and sell it out and, and have a good show, you know, with some quality fights. Let's talk about that first show because um, you had what some people would say the fight of the year. I think um, even one what the fight of the year was Richie versus Nort. Uh, um, we've got. I don't think so. But. It was a good fight. It was an alright. Was it? Yeah, five rounds is good. Like, I would have liked to have seen not uh, horizontal. Yeah. I mean, that would have made it for a better fight, but rematch, rematch. I'm a bit hard on myself. Yeah, rematch is on. He believes yeah. in himself. Yeah, that look. There's not a huge like. I mean, there's a lot of great boxes out here, of course, but the the depth is limited. So it is exciting with this this bubble opening and what we can do and look we're, we're going to be working with Richie quite a lot and um, you know he's 4-0 and tomorrow co-main event um, you know big futuristically like, winning but you know it's, <laughs> he, he's good. got a like 32 so it's all or nothing for, for Richie and we're, we're going to be working with him in the next two years to let's see where we can take him uh, we, we, that big Aussie fight or whatever I'm, but all my chips I'm sliding all in that's, you, um, that's one of the reasons why you moved to Auckland? Well, yes. Uh, yes. yes. I'll say yes. Yes, it's easier. That, yes. Um, let's also talk about um, how you had Andre versus Marcus Hayward, um, David Light uh, defending his New Zealand title. Um, yeah. Of course, Mia uh, uh, fought on that same show as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you almost forgot about that, did you? <laughs> so, oh, yeah. How many fights have you had so far in amateur? How many fights have you had in the amateurs? Over 50, over 50 fights in the amateurs. Those knocks are starting to uh, forget things. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, let's talk more about that fight. It was a g good fight night. Was it a good fight? Yeah, look, the the main event was huge. Like fight of the fight of the year, I'd say. And you know, Andre going down in weight. Um, Marcus just brings it every time. And look, tomorrow will be interesting though. We, can Andre? go back to super welterweight, can he perform, can he lose weight the right way, some would argue you know, he lost his energy after the third round or, or Marcus will go, but you know, it's, Shea brings it and like, again, like, huge fight tomorrow and you know, this is, this isn't, you know, these are 50-50 fights, like, and you look at the TAB odds, even Tane versus um, Richie's a good, you know, brilliant fight and let's just see, let's just see, look, we've, um, you know, and Andre's the performer, and you know we're we're excited to have him at the top of the bill. And you know, let, let's let's see a sold out theatre tomorrow night on Sky Sport Two. It's also good is that you're going, you're getting multiple female fights on the one card because um, you don't really see that often. I mean, even the Higgins show, they were trying to get a woman's, they were trying to get a woman's fight. Yeah, they tried to get a women's fight, but that ended up pulling out in the last minute. Uh, we had, uh, not even Shane Cameron does that many a women's fight. He had one women's fight in, on all his shows, and that was the heavyweight fight, that was, which was great. But you've got two women's fights on a televised show. Yeah, no, it's exciting. We've got um, Mia in there, obviously. She's talented. Um, and Troy with the big debut. And Troy's, you know, six, yeah, exactly. And she's she's 32, a bit like, you know, Richie, and she going to give it a good shot the next two or three years going yeah. going professionally so again excited to have look at all the talent we have but yeah. well, Richie it's all about the talent I think it's not not about male female anyways to be honest I think mm. what you've got there is you've got good fighters and not to talk about you know talking about everybody the opponents too yeah. so uh, whether they're male female or aliens yes yes but 
there's still not enough equality, and that's just why we bring attention to it. Right, yeah. but you've got, you've, but yeah. these females aren't just on there because the of our quota. Yeah. No. They're there because they're good fighters. Yeah. So, um, I, I guess we're agreeing to, to yeah. disagree yeah. in a way. But if you look at the show; it starts with Chad Milner's hundredth fight. You get your super heavyweight dust up with Matt Mataika. That's going to be mean. That's yeah. going to be a good fight. Then you go into who do we have? Mia. Yeah, Mia's yeah. obviously there. New Zealand champ yeah. Troy, big debut. Against Jerome Pampalone, who's, you know, probably the most skillful boxer in the country. Then you have, you know, the big man, the hatchet here. And then, obviously... You the know, monster. Then Richie, the, then the, the renegade hatchet. main event and, like, quality fights. This, and in seven fights, it's not a long-winded night. Like, you get in there at 7.30, you're out of there at 10.30. It's, it's quality from top to finish. And, like, that's what we're about. You know, we've got music, entertainment. It, there's, it's the full package at the theatre. So, look, General we're really excited. on the decks. Like where we, you know, it, it will be sold out. There are a couple more GA tickets, um, but look, it's, it's we've got three Sky City coming on board. It's huge this year. Um, April, the show tomorrow. Um, then we've got July, and November, and look, it's it's exciting times. And who knows? We'll we'll keep the Friday night fights as the regular platform for these guys, and then we'll have the bigger shows. Like I don't know. We we don't know. We don't know what will happen. Like it's I'm new to it as well. I'm learning, and like you, you've got to respect these other guys in it as well like you know Peach and um, Glozier and Craig Thompson those sort of guys obviously like they're the heartbeat of New Zealand boxing and it's you know it's an honour to sort of come alongside them and put my shows in and and have my sort of say but look it's tomorrow let's it's going to be good it's going to be a good show so you got those uh, two possible dates in the future with uh, was it June July July, July and, and November. November. What else are you wanting to do? Because um, you want to do those regular shows on a regular basis uh, beyond um, to hold that stable in New Zealand. Are you also wanting to do management and um, sign some boxes on as well? Yeah, that's the plan. Like, obviously, have a few different fighters um, sign four or five. Fight. I don't know. Whatever talent's coming through, we'll, um, we'll look at. And who knows, mate? With, like I say, I'm. And um, well, yeah, Richie, you know. I want to. I want Nick to put me on for a title shot. I want to fight the Waikato Wussy. I mean, Waikato Warrior. Um, yeah. Later on this year, so. Um, well, that's that's again like lightweights in New Zealand. It's we got Shiva and Nort and uh, Cairo, and that's it. Like so, we with I know COVID was starting to open up a bit, but let's let's get creative. Let's make these these fights down at lightweight. Big fights, you know, like. And, um, and good fighters yeah, too. Great fighters, and the, and the shows there now, like this is the thing, it's, it's a clean cut platform, like Sky City, again, I can't do it without Sky City, so then coming on board's huge. Um, at Sky Sport, all of these things, all these moving parts that make it happen, so um, yeah, like, very excited about what's to come. Last question, um, what, is your, what is your dream, dream event that you want to do, that you want to put on? Oh, I don't know. Um, Where's your ambition? Oh, it's, I don't know. Eden Park or something like that. Like, imagine uh, eat, oh, an outdoor show. I don't know. Who, who knows? It's, I, I, look, I'm, I, I sort of fell into it at the same time. So, I've, of course, um, we'll see where we can take it. But, of I course. Think, I think P3 wants to have a regular ongoing show that, that people know about that's out there yeah. in the general we're, public. We're starting at the theatre, and, like, that's the reality. It's, you know, a thousand seats in there, and... We can start selling that out and, and let's see where we can go with it. But of course, we want to we want to start doing outdoor shows. Like, who, who knows, mate? Let's, let's see. I've always wanted to see um, a show at the tennis arena, you know, the one um, that's near the hospital? ASB, yeah, yeah. yeah, ASB Tennis Arena, because um, I know that they're in construction to put a roof on it, uh, over it so that um, when it rains, you can put a roof over it. But also, it's a removable roof, so it takes um, so it can be opened up. So just imagine that uh, open air boxing in an arena. That, just imagine that. No, exactly. That's the thing. We'll, um, we'll see where we can take these shows. But I, I think what Nick's doing is building up fighters, and then you know, then, then things, opportunities start to happen. You know, so especially with that bubble, like you said. Well, that, like you. The rea- the, you've got to build the, the profiles of these guys that so they can actually, you know, they have the demand to put on shows at those. You can only do so much and, you know, the platform's there. Now it's up to, you know, The Hatchet and, and Andre to go knock their guys out and then we just build off that and see who can take it. So, Last question. What is your... Uh, oh, sorry, one more, one more, one more. One exciting one. Uh, your, your prediction 
for Richie versus Tane and Andre versus Shay. Um, oh yeah, here we go. Two, probably round five stoppage for the hatchet. Big ring walk, the entertainer over here. Um, exciting fight, and then main event probably. Who knows, mate? We'll, it can go up, uh, probably Andre late. Like he, I've seen what he's doing in training. He's He's really improving and he's, he's looking sharp and he's taken to that lighter weight a lot better. So, um, look, it's, it's exciting. It's going to be a good show. We need to think of a nickname for him, like a little fight nickname. I don't know. Even though you probably never fight, but like, um, but like some sort of... Nick, Nick Zoolander. Randall. Nah? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, we're done. All right. Oh, yeah. We have Nick Randall and Richie Hadlow.